Hey everyone, it's Patrick from Oakland Travel, and welcome to Key West, Florida. This was September of 2020. This is vlog episode number 40. We are right in the middle of a glass bottom boat tour in Key West. And uh, so we're going to turn it back over to our narrator. Hi there, Maria here from Oakland Travel. Just wanted to pop in with a quick reminder. If you enjoyed this video, please click the thumbs up. If you're new here or you haven't yet subscribed, please consider subscribing with the notification bell on so you'll know when we post new content. Thank you so much for your support to help us reach our goal of 10,000 subscribers by the end of 2022. What Cody has to say, cell phones. Excellent time to turn those to silent. If you feel you have to have a cell phone conversation out here, that's fine. Those are required, though, to be taken outside. Speaking of outside, at any time throughout the presentation, if you'd like to get back outside, get some fresh air, you're more than welcome to do so. You're not required to stay in the main cabin the whole time. Ask for any reason, if you move yourself in or out of the main cabin, please close and latch the door behind you. When you're outside, also keep in mind, this is a National Marine Sanctuary, so absolutely nothing goes off the side of the boat. Cody, we're all set up whenever you're ready to go ahead and take it away. All right, thanks Captain Brian. Uh, folks, welcome out to the Barrier Reef. How's everybody doing this evening, good? Awesome. Uh, as the captain mentioned, we really do have some pretty nice conditions out here. Just a little bit of motion, as he said, though, that's expected. We are six miles away from Key West, out into the open. Uh, they know 15 or 20 of those little striped fish chasing around, bumping into you, nipping at you, trying to get you on your way. If you really think about that for a second, a fish the size of your palm that knows how to form a gang and fight humans, probably give us some credit. Pretty smart little guy. On a weird change, uh, we just had a silver fish with a deeply pork bright yellow tail up there talking about how smart fish are. This is one you're going to eat. Uh, if anybody likes seafood, you go back to Key West, walk around. They are prominently listed in about 90-95% of the restaurants as catch of the day, yellow tail snappers. I'm sure once I've said that, you've already seen that on the menu somewhere. Uh, snappers are delicious fish. I highly recommend trying them. Again, I know it's kind of weird to talk about that while we're looking at them, but I don't know if you'll go to a petting zoo and talk about how good rabbits taste, but anyway. Uh, it is something that you're in one of the capitals of fresh seafood for. Uh, we usually place third or fourth every year in the nation, actually, in seafood production here in the Keys. So they got a sign outside that says fresh local seafood, uh, lobster, whatever the case is, they're not lying to you. It's pretty good stuff. Snapper, though, does tend to be the one on the most menus. It might not just be yellowtail. There's Kubera snapper, mutton snapper, gray snapper, red snapper. Uh, if you see mutton snapper, that's my personal favorite, so just FYI. Uh, but they are really... Uh, uh, curious little fish, which I, my personal belief is why they end up on so many menus. Uh, these fish go after absolutely anything that falls in the water. So if a cheetah blows off the boat, you'll see a snapper come up and grab it. Uh, if somebody's not feeling well, you go out to the back deck of the boat. The worst part of your scenario, or the best part of your worst case scenario there, you don't see a lot of snappers. Uh, gross but true. Point behind it, they go. Uh, one last little fish. There's a one little lone yellow guy swimming right down there on the bottom. He's got two black bars and a white band in between where a fish would have a neck if he did. That is one of the noisy ones. Uh, that is a little pork fish. Uh, if anybody have a fishing pole right now, I pulled that. There's a moon jelly. Right on time, little buddies. <laughs> uh, but if this little yellow guy was to come out of the water, believe it or not, they will start squealing like a pig. Real strange sound for a fish to make. Uh, but that is the noise that they make and the name they give on pork fish. They're members of the grunt fish family. All the grunts will make some sort of a weird grunting noise. This one just sounds closest to a pig. Uh, if anybody who has uh, came to Key West, maybe you are uh, fans of Ernest Hemingway. He wrote about these grunts in one of his books, mentioned the term grunts and grits out here. Uh, grunts and grits have corals in the ocean. Uh, we might not even be able to set foot in a tool. They do a lot for toxicity. That's the hardest word we can say. <laughs> but all this uh, do a lot for our ocean. So just to kind of understand exactly what you're seeing. Believe it or not, while we've been here, it is just coral. There are no sea plants, there's no sea weeds, sea grass, sea sponges, anything like that that actually live here where we are. Uh, those things do live in this ecosystem, they're just in a different area or zone. Uh, we passed over part of that zone to get out here today, it's called a lagoon zone. Uh, but it's deeper, it's about 30 feet deep. That's where you find the sponge gardens and sea grass plants and all those types of things. But all the structures down here that you may have assumed were sea plants, they're kind of moving around like a plant with blowing a breeze, moving with all the currents. Those are soft corals. And then everything stony are the hard corals. Now, the stony looking structures, they're skeletons. You gotta remember the corals are living marine animals, they're not just plants and rocks. Uh, but the hard coral skeleton is made out of something called calcium carbon. That is what pulls toxins out of the ocean um, and allows and builds these uh, structures that we're seeing. 
basically out of limestone. Calcium carbonate is a real fancy word for limestone. So everything that looks like a rock, even those little things that look like bones lying down in between the coral heads, these are all different types of hard corals. The uh, soft corals, they are a protein-based skeleton. It's not the softest thing in the world. The protein is actually very similar to the protein in our fingernails. Uh, but that just allows them to bend the boom or the hard corals can. So the soft and hard corals were the two things. Now, again, these are the skeletons that we're seeing. Uh, they have exoskeletons, which are the exact, exact opposite of our bodies. Uh, humans have what's called an endoskeleton. So your bones right in the middle of your arm, and all the tissue, muscles, skin, everything wraps around that, of course. Opposite here. Uh, we're seeing the bone itself and all the tissue, all the living parts of the coral are actually down inside of these structures. So kind of a weird way to put a spin on it. Every structure below us is kind of like a big apartment building with hundreds of little polyps living inside of it.